Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, I wanted to take a close look at the number neck device. This is called the RG3 530PS. So this is basically the downgraded version of the previous model that had dual boot. And nope, we don't have dual boot anymore. That is one of the perks they basically dropped with this model. And I must say that I completely understand that they did this. Uh, to begin with, I have this moment that I'm looking at the device and I was thinking, yeah, why didn't you do that in the first place? Because with the previous model, it was all cool. They have like an option with Android, but it felt always incomplete. And I was using the bodice era or better said, like the emulation part more often. Inside the box, we're not going to get any fancy stuff. We do get some wipes. We're going to get a screen protector and of course the necessary cable. There is no charger. You need to basically buy it separately in your country. I personally only own this particular color. I will just call it the Super NES. It's just very cool. Like, I'm just getting this nostalgia vibe, especially when this the dot matrix with stereo sound. That's kind of cool that they implemented this. But the color thing of this device is absolutely great. I had the option for a translucent black, but I went for this because I am really a sucker when it comes to these old school retro look. I just love it, man. It gives me like this nostalgia vibe to it. But let's take a close look at the handle itself. How good or how bad is it? At the bottom part, we're going to get two speakers and they sound quite nice. In the middle, we're going to get two SD slots, one for the firmware and the other one is going to be for the booting up into the software itself for playing games. And then we're having over here the headphone jack out. And that is one of the perks I really love what you're going to get with this device. It comes with an OTG port and reset, then a volume control. And this other thing I really love is having a physical volume control over here. And then I was focusing on my finger because my handheld dropped. That's the drop test. Yeah. And one of the Type-C ports for charging. At the back we're going to get four shoulder buttons and I can tell you they are very nice. They have like membranes underneath so we do have like the normal travel because some of the handhelds have made a decision for micro switches. I don't really mind but while holding and playing I think I can reach the shoulder button quite easy. At the phone we're going to get a very cool configuration. I love when they're going to put the d-pad in here because I'm a d-pad gamer and the d-pad yeah so let's talk about that first. The D-pad feels very nice when it comes to the travel. It does have like a little bit of a resistance to it, but when you're looking at it, it got a very nice resistance and long travel, but we're actually going to play some games. Yeah, there is a little bit of a downside. When playing actually fighting games, I've noticed I can just do my move without any problem, but not every single move, especially when it comes to Street Fighter. Yeah, the D-pad is not the perfect D-pad, but it plays okay for adventure games and let's say most games. At the front we're going to get A, B, X and Y. It's kind of interesting that it's used for A, B, X, Y. Okay. Nevertheless, we're going to get select and start over here. But I do find interesting that we have the power button that you need to press at the front. So that's different. But I did find that there is a tiny depth when it comes to the front glass and the display itself. Not as big of a deal, but it will give you a different experience when it comes to, like say, normal handhelds. It's always difficult to show you do of the front glass that's kind of glossy but it will give you in general idea the display looks absolutely amazing the only downside that i found with this is that when you're using like certain kind of games you're going to get two black borders because the screen resolution if you want to have the best format for your game so think about if you want to play in playstation portable or in Game Boy Advance. there we do see one of the first things that i don't find really annoying but i just wanted to point it out just want to give you an example here, you can see that we're having the two black borders at the bottom and at the top. We can change it out by pressing the F button over here, I didn't mention it before. This will bring you in the retro arc configuration. We can go all the way up to options or videos and you can just basically mess around with it. And you can just get a different skill if you want to. I'm just going to leave it as is. When you're looking at this device and getting it out of the box, everything looks very nice. The menu is very cool looking. And I really love, it's just like this one of these plug and play solutions. And I mean, you still need to have some knowledge if you want to add some games. But all the way up to PlayStation 1, it runs perfectly. We even have the option to play some Dreamcast. There are some places portable, we will try it out. But we'll not say it's going to be running perfectly. Nevertheless, let's try a couple of games. By pressing the F button, you need to basically get into the closing or the menu to close the game. Let's put it that way. But you can also make a quick load and quick save. But one of the things I really love to play on this are just the basic ported games. For example, Doom. I love this. 
and it's actually pretty damn good when it comes to the handheld so everything has been configured so you can actually really enjoy some doom on the go in combination with the audio of this device oh yeah it looks by the way amazing on this display to have a little bit of a glossy glare is kind of interesting but this runs pretty damn good and for me this is one of those reasons i love this device but if you're going to look into the Game Boy Advance stuff and you just want to play some old school games, I think this handheld will be great for that. Every single 8-bit, 16-bit or handheld I slap into this thing works as a charm. It's just great. And like I mentioned before, the black bars, I personally don't really bother by it. I'd rather have stuff like that than it's going to be all squeezed or like deformed. Let's actually let's try a little bit of a DS. I am not a big fan of this simply because you need to switch between the displays and it plays quite weird. Oh man, this is one of my favorite games I've played on my N64 still. I think it's one of my first games ever. Alright, let's switch. You can see we can switch between the other display. We're pressing the L2. There we go. I need to really get used to this, but. The overall graphics are so different when you're looking at the N64 version. At the back end, they have set the device to one time frame skip if needed. Oh man, this place is so weird. But for just basic games, it works just fine. I can't stop playing, I can tell you that. Another system I think is pretty damn cool to play on here is Sega Dreamcast. We're going to get into the, let's say, the era of handhelds that they play quite nice or good. We did hear some minor hiccups, especially when you're looking and look into the audio. But the general gameplay is not bad. There we have it. But that's more the question, does it really ruin the Dead Alive 2 fun? There we go. He's starting to... Getting to whoop my ass. Yep. Especially when you're having a lot of stuff going on. Then we're going to get like, a lot of stuttering. The audio itself is not going to be super loud, but I really love the way how it sounds very nicely when it comes to the mid and high. Also the D-pad works just fine when it comes to beat em ups. You can move every single direction without any problem. Both the D-pad and analog stick have been configured, so you can basically play both ways. But the 16-bit stuff runs pretty damn good. And when you're looking at the aspect ratio and everything, so far I can see it looks really nice on here. But they will give you the option to play some N64, but unfortunately when you're looking at these games, they don't run that great. You can hit here, it like stutters all the time. It's the limited edition, stuttering killer instinct. There we go. Do we actually have some gameplay? Of course, all the problems we had seen before. Some parts are kind of playable, but let's be honest, this is not the way how you would experience an old school game from back in the days. Alright, so when it comes to PlayStation 1, this is a system that runs pretty damn well. We have reached the point finally with these devices that we're going to have like good PlayStation 1 emulation. And I have no idea what I'm doing. You know you're remembering some of the games back in the day that were pretty damn cool, but now I am more like... No. He is completely out of the control. Can I do the same thing? 
But let's take a close look at PlayStation Portable with some Tekken 5. The reason I choose this is because Tekken 5 is the, let's say the game that most of the time runs quite well if it comes to a fighting game. And overall we do get a very nice stable frame rate. Take consideration if you're going to get into some God of War stuff like that, it's not going to be running any good. There are some handful of games that will run fine, everything has been set to speed up. You can see sometimes it dips down to all the way to 30, but that's what we're going to get with these cheaper devices at the moment. You also get into the settings, pressing the F button over here. We can go to settings and mess around with it if you want to. But let's take a close look at the inside. And the way they constructed this is quite interesting. They added a lot of like tiny embers like screws, but all the other parts of the case are clicked together. Opening it up is super easy and very, let's say, service friendly. So the first thing I do notice is the way how they construct this. And what do I mean? So to begin with, they made the decision to implement the battery with a plug i really love it and the reason why because if you need to replace the battery you can just replace them without any hassle they're using double-sided tape to put the lithium battery in here with the lipo so in total we're going to get 3500 milliamps and again this is absolutely great so in the inside here we're going to get the handle itself what is interesting in my opinion that there is this kind of thermal pad on here but there is not really any cooling whatsoever. The battery is laying on top of it, so I think that is one of the only ways they can go with this, because there is of course limited space. But then of course we having the way how everything has been constructed. So also this part is quite interesting, simply because when you want to you replace a joystick, let's say you have drifting or any problems, you can just click it open, remove the screws and just replace it. The same goes with the tiny speakers over here. If you have any problems, you can just click them out and replace them with ease. And the shoulder buttons, everything is more like a DIY kit. A beautiful PCB in the inside. It also states over here, version one, made in 2023. So this is basically what we're going to get in the inside. So when it comes to repairs, this thing can be repaired fairly easy or replaced in battery. So I really love it what they're doing over there. So at the top, we do have like quite a cool, interesting of options. We have a mini HDMI out and yep, we can actually use this thing on your television. The HDMI is just an absolutely great addition to the device itself. But how it worked was slightly different when you're comparing it with different devices. I just needed to reboot the system Otherwise, I couldn't get a signal on my television. So if you're going to play a game, you need to quit it, reboot it, and then you can actually use it on your television. A little bit of a bummer because I have seen some devices that didn't have this problem before. Maybe in the future they can fix it. But for now, this is for me the way how I need to operate the HDMI function out. A thing I really like about is that we do have the option so to play the games on your HDMI. But for me, everything has been set to the SPS ratio, which you can see over here. And I think that is pretty damn cool and quite genius. So we have original SPS ratio, we're actually going to play a certain amount of games. For example, if you just want to play some old school Sega games, they work quite nice. And we're going to boot up the PlayStation Portable, it will automatically set it to the widescreen resolution. So when it comes to playing on television, they absolutely nailed it. But let's give you an example. When you're going to plug out the cable, nothing is going to be happening on the main display. With some of the devices, we have seen that automated switches. So let's plug the cable back in. And here you will see that in the background, the display will turn on. So that's basically what happens when you're going to plug out the cable. A little bit of a bummer, in my opinion. Where this is like a very cool looking form factor handheld that comes with a beautiful display. Lowering the price point that it should do on within the first place simply because this was a handheld that had a lot of potential. I really love the form factor. The display depending on what kind of games you want to play is going to be yeah, something you need to decide for yourself. For the old school stuff it's just fine. But again into Dreamcast and PlayStation Portable there we do have like a little bit of a problem when it comes to overall performance. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing, let me know in the comments what you think of this device and it would be great to see you in the next video.